Breeze downtown, not bad actually. With me, it says 25 degrees, only a couple off that. Even though my prediction is 28 degrees today, I think we're going to get there. Barbara's 27, so uh, none of us absolutely <laughs> believe the weatherman. It's Friday, February the 4th, coming into a long weekend and looking forward to another uh, short week. I've got to be honest with you, there was uh, Auckland anniversary last weekend. This one is, of course, Waitangi Day. And uh, yeah, celebrating New Zealand Day pretty much, and uh, looking forward to that as well. So, let me do this. That's right, you're right here at Galaxy 107 FM. Glad to have everybody joining us this morning. Uh, today we're actually kicking it off, would you believe, here in New Zealand and uh, absolutely elated to catch up with a good friend of ours from, well, you know, do it management. Yes, of course, we're talking about Paul Marshall. Uh, but first of all, let me tell you about this. Ladies and gentlemen, today's picture artists on Galaxy 107 FM. Absolutely, and believe me, you're going to love this too. Got to thank everybody that's joining us this morning, and welcome along. Believe me, it's going to be a great interview this morning. It really is. Going to watch it a little later on over on YouTube. You know what to do now, don't you? Yes, you do. You really do. Sub, thumb, bell. Bingo. Uh, can't go wrong with the bell as well. Like us. Yeah. Submit. You know, become a member. We would absolutely love that. Really, really would. Today, we're going to Auckland, catching up with a good friend of ours, uh, Paul Marshall, and, well, check this out. I am your stream here at Galaxy. God, it's hot in here. <laughs> it really is. What's, yeah. the, what's the temperature where you are? It's a bit cool, isn't it, actually? It's a bit cloudy. It's, it's nice. I've got to mow the lawns after this, so... Um... <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, the lawns of my new house. The, the place is so big, it's like, uh, well, bigger than what I had anyway, but 600 square meter lawn, so um, that's quite a quite a size. Yeah, so, I hope you got a ride on. Uh, no, but it's, actually, if I did, I'd probably be dead because uh, one of the places, it's it's about, a, what is that, 45 degrees? Is Ooh. that? Uh, whatever the angle is, it's really steep. Well, then I hope you got a fly, Mike. Yeah, actually, I don't. I've got to, I've got to buy a new uh, line trimmer, as we call them here in New Zealand. Strimmer, if you're in the UK, mm -hmm. and do what you call them in the US, sorry, or Canada. But um, a weed eater. <laughs> yeah, I call that a goat. Or maybe one of Barbara's sheep. <laughs> actually, that'd be a sheep would be good. Well, talk to Barbara. She's got a couple. She'll yeah. like, she'll give you one. Hi. Multi-purpose as well. And yeah, they cut the grass. Exactly, yeah, and you can always name it something like your, I don't know, mint, mint sauce, rose, something, you know. <laughs> I've got plenty for you if you want yeah, some. Uh, the Barbara's, lambs at the moment, and they're up and coming. Yeah, Barbara says she's got plenty for you. The lambs at the moment, they're up and coming, so, you know, you get a good run out of them. Actually, yeah, lambs would be good. Actually, I like hog it. Hog it's the best. Here oh, Fair enough. Yep, yep. It is. I've got a couple of hoggets you can have. Yeah, she's Lisa. got a couple of hoggets you can have. The old Belisa. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. hi, Michael. Hi, Joan. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Michael. Michael King, of course. And Joan, nice to have you back again. Today we're talking to, well, he was English, but we officially call him a Kiwi now. We do. He's acceptable in New Zealand because not <laughs> only that, he's a damn good artist. And, well, we work together as well with Doer Management. We really do. So it's such a pleasure to catch up with our good friend, Paul Marshall. It really is. Um, Paul, this pandemic has been an absolute pain in the prosteria, but you haven't been a slug. You've been working your way quite nicely, haven't you? Yeah, well, what happened when the pandemic first started was uh, I've, I've got my main band, Hangar 18, that basically went on hold. 
Uh, I put on hiatus. I thought at the time for maybe 12 months or so, but it's been over two years now, but that's another story. Uh, but in the meantime, I um, yeah, I bought a new um, brand new computer, brand new Mac and set up a home recording studio. Um, I've written, you know, I've got a few songs, uh, probably over 500, but um, and a lot of them don't suit my main band. So I've got all these different songs that are sort of in different genres and stuff. So I started noodling during the pandemic and the lockdowns. And, well, um, not in public, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Good luckily, God, the man's a noodler. <laughs> luckily, only noodling in the bedroom. Ooh. That sounds even worse. Yeah, uh, no, nothing on TikTok, please. Yeah, noodling in the bedroom by myself. <laughs> Was the lights on or off? This is worrying now. Well, that was that I can't tell. Yeah. Uh, Franco Nanucci is watching as well. Nice to have Franco on board. Let's go to the desk, bro. <laughs> You're right here at Galaxy 107 FM and such a pleasure to catch up with a good friend of ours, of course, Paul Marshall. Nice to have you back, Paul. Kia ora. Hello there. Nice to see you guys and thanks for having me on the show again. It's, it's a pleasure to see you guys and to talk to you. Well, let me reciprocate that back to you because it is always a pleasure to catch up with you, Paul. It really, really is. Uh, drummer extraordinaire and just makes some of the best music I have heard in a long time, I've got to be honest. Uh, but I'm kind of worried about a little bit of, you know, what he's drinking just lately. We'll discuss that very shortly. Uh, but Paul Mayo. Now, uh, you know, this kind of brings me to the fridge, if you know what I mean. I'm looking for a jar of Paul Mayo. Uh, tell, how did you come to Paul Mayo? Uh, actually, um, through my record label that I run, through Do It Records, um, there's certain online magazines around the world that, that feature um, my label, basically. And um, there's there's a company in America that regularly feature every three months they email me, hey, can we can we rerun the uh, interview with you and blah 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 blah. And basically in that it's it's basically you know saying to people if you if you're an artist and you want to release a record, uh, work with Do It Records, then contact us. So Paul basically contacted me through that magazine. Um, I then listened to his material. I sent it off to a couple of my staff, and then between us we have an A and R meeting, and then decide. Uh, if we like the music or not, if we do, you know, we get back in touch with the artist and then one thing leads to another, we sign them and then we start working with them. But Paul's a great artist, he's got some great tracks. You know, you know, I actually expected you to say something to me like, oh, it was an accident on Facebook, like as well Critter was. <laughs> no, it's, uh, well, I suppose it was it's an accident online, but only by him finding the, uh, the write-up about my label and, and sending it through. Yeah, no, believe me, that was uh, as well Critter. Uh, on Facebook when I was setting up uh, my Facebook and everything like that. That's what I got for my name. You know what I mean? So I looked, I, I looked at it and went, why the hell not? Let's do it. <laughs> so Quite a few artists well approached me either uh, on Facebook or Instagram or, or on social media. And funny enough, this, this is an interesting point. I had an artist the other day that said to me, what kind of artist are you looking for? So I had to reply with hard working ones. As you do. Yeah. Yep, yeah, absolutely. They've got to be dedicated. You've got to be hardworking. And uh, creative as well, I think. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. So put that in your um, uh, in your bio. Speaking of bios, wow. I mean, a whole page, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. We've got so much information here. Usually I get about four or five pages. You know what I mean? Well, it's a brand, a brand new artist, so I don't really have much to say yet. I've got one single out and the next single that you guys are going to play exclusively, world exclusive on your station today. Um, but other than that, that's, that's all we've got so far. Yeah. So as I said earlier, we, um, 
in the pandemic, I basically got a home computer, started some new projects, so, so many songs. But I've now got six artists that are all me. So I've written all the songs, and, and, and I've, I've also collaborated with some people, because I'm not the best singer in the world. But this project we're talking about today is fully, fully me, everything. All the music, everything, all the writing, and even the singing, wow. sorry to say. Wow. <laughs> what do you mean you're not one of the best uh, yes, singers in the world? Come on. I think you're pretty good, actually, I do. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about this, and uh, I was alluding to uh, something in the water. Well, Robots in the Drinking Water, here's the bio, literally. Uh, indie pop art with the soundtrack of, to life, Robots in the Drinking Water were formed 2021, initially developed as a musical outlet during the global lockdown. I can understand that, I uh, really can. Uh, Robots in the Drinking Water... Mix elements of 80s pop with 21st century culture to... Oh, I'm going to miss that word. Literally, it's too intelligent for me. Uh, to embrace the way of living in this computer generic world, basically. Uh, this is a fantastic, fantastic new sound. It really, really is. So tell me a little bit about Different. Yeah, Different is a song that, as the title might actually uh, entail, is different. So... Um... I wrote the track, uh, it was literally, I was talking to an old mate of mine back in, in the UK who still works in the same supermarket 30 plus years on since I last saw him. And it's the supermarket where I worked as a kid. So, um, yeah, it's got me thinking about, you know, how a lot of people basically do the nine to five and, and they never do anything different. And I've always been a little bit different, as you may know, and I like to do things differently. So that's, that's basically the, the basis of how the song came around. So, and it was pretty much written, it was one of those throwaway songs, it was written in 10 minutes. I actually, I actually only sung it once, because normally I sing on the demos, and then I'll send them off to um, one of the artists I collaborate with for them to do the, the proper singing on there, you know, the professional singing. Um, but after doing a couple of these tracks with Robots in the Drinking Water, I decided I might just do a project where I do everything myself. I don't have to rely on anyone, I don't have to wait to get the vocals back. And so I just threw some effects on there and did some backing, and, and it is what it is. Well, love, it, love it or hate it, it is what it is. Well, I've got to be honest with you, in going through the uh, the influences here, believe me, uh, I, I used to, this takes me back to the DJ days of nightclubs and stuff I used to do back in the day, the string with Susie and the Banshees, Joy Division, uh, The oh, Cure, yeah. Adam and the Ants for sure, uh, P.I.L., The Police, Don't Stand So Close to Me, You Can Always Tell Your Friends That One, uh, Thomas Dolby, uh, Gary Newman, Tears for Fears, Very English, uh, there, I've got to be honest with you, the Sugar Cubes and the Barnet, back to America, Athlete, Snow Patrol, Radiohead, love, love, love them, Peter Gabriel, uh, and the list goes on and on and on and on and uh, on. Believe me, I used to have all of this when I was playing this in nightclubs and stuff like that. Uh, so believe me, very, very cool taste there to be able to draw your influences from. Yeah, thank you. I mean, I... I always had, no, well, when I was a kid, I literally grew up listening to punk rock and I wouldn't listen to anything else. And that's what you do when you're 10, 12 years old. Um, but as I, as I uh, got a little bit older, my um, taste in music is very eclectic and I like pretty much everything. I like good music and it doesn't matter if it's, um, you know, indie soul or pop or rock or rap or, or whatever, even classical and stuff. Uh, it just depends what mood I'm in and, and I like listening to it all. So yeah, there's a wide genre of artists. I listen to. You know, I think I can still lay my hands on my uh, Cherry Red DMs. Really? I really, uh, I really do. And of course, I think I can put my hands on my uh, leather jacket as well. I used to uh, be a part of the Crest movement. Right, right. Way back in the day. Over in England too. Believe me, it was absolutely fantastic. So, I digress. i got to be honest with you. Let's get back to the important stuff. And as Paul mentioned... Nobody else has ever played this except for us. You're right here at Galaxy. Here's Different by Robots in the Drinking Water. God, it's hot me. Excuse me, Paul, I'm sweating. Did you, say, you said Crass, didn't you? You were into Crass. Yeah. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was with Crass Productions for a while. Right. I, lo I loved that band when I, was, when I was a kid. Obviously, I was about... I'd have been about 12, I suppose. They were they were very anarchic. <laughs> <laughs> well, believe me, uh, I was their engineer for a while. Oh, right. Wow. That's awesome. Way back in the day. 
<laughs> that, that's shown. This was actually a different colour back then. Hey, Franco, <laughs> we must catch up. <laughs> it was. Mm. Anyway, um, thank you for the coffee. Nice to meet you all. Actually, I'm just going to go and get something. It's interesting. You're talking about old records. Oh, okay. Oh gosh! <laughs> I, d I missed it. You I, did. I didn't. I'll get. I'll get it coming back. Those legs. I'll get it with the short coming back. <laughs> Here we come. Oh, dismantling the back room. <laughs> oh, Franco, we have to catch you up. Yeah, we do. We and do. Sean, hi, darling. Oh, he's only got one case full. I said the one I could find, basically, because it's just me. But you remember these guys? Love this. Oh yeah, I do. Wow. Dawn of the Dickies. Yep. By the Dickies. Look at that. Ah, ha ha, killer disc. Brilliant. 1977, I think that came out. <sighs> anyway, I've got a whole, a whole ton of them. I don't know. What are you into? Um, everything. <laughs> oh, actually, just, just quickly, you know, we talked about the police earlier. I got offered a few thousand dollars for this in Los Angeles, wow, 10, 12 years ago. You may not have ever seen this. This, this was a, um, a Los Angeles record collector, had never seen it. He said he'd heard about it, but never seen it. It's the police. It's really, really rare, apparently. I didn't know how rare it was until I met this guy in his LA shop. And it's message in a bottle by the police in a police badge shaped vinyl with message in a bottle live on the back. Wow. Work it, cool work it. Let's go to the desk, bro. We're running out of time here. <laughs> I like this. I really, really like this style. I really do. So, tell me, Paul, anything new coming out in the near future? With robots, yes. I'm, I've got uh, another six tracks that I'm currently working on. Um, but the next release will be the one you've just played. So, um, that will be at least nine weeks away. So, um, it's a nine-week cycle, basically, on my label to release stuff. So, yeah, that'll be out in between nine and twelve weeks' time. Okay, so therefore, uh, I'm expecting to see you again, you know, maybe nine, twelve weeks away. Yes, you will do. You'll see it everywhere. Nice, nice. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, absolutely love different. I think it's different, to be honest with you. I kind of like it. I really do. And uh, looking forward to catching up with you again in the near future. But um, fortunately, we do have to move on. We have another interview coming up very, very shortly. Sean Simpson's joining us. How are you, darling? Nice to have you on board again. And uh, don't forget, we're going over to see Dwayne Watson very, very shortly. He's bringing Willie B. Sober with him today for the first time. So, uh, Paul, don't go anywhere just yet. We've got a couple of things that we're going to do. But in the meantime, Galaxy 107 FM here in New Zealand. And I've got to thank everybody that's tuned in this morning and watching on Facebook Live. It is an absolute pleasure for us here in New Zealand to say... Another Indie Artist Interview brought to you by Galaxy 107 FM in association with Rise Up TV, Big Record and Sony Music to watch it.
getting lost in the dark. Passion of the night came as the devil grew inside. These thoughts overwhelm him, hit me like the shore waves. Destruction, devastation, till the dawn breaks. These are experiments. 